Four car engine misconceptions I'm tired of hearing. V6s are lame engines. When I think of V6 engines, usually VQ Boys and V6 Mustangs come to mind, and that's probably why childhood me, as well as even early car enthusiast me, saw them as more of a meme engine, and that's because I was raised up around muscle culture where all they ever talk about is V8s or nothing. Now, the reality is, V6s can be taken seriously, and they're not just for posers who are looking for attention. Unfortunately though, there is still a huge lingering misconception that V6 engines, even if they're okay if them in V6 Mustangs or VQs or, you know, fair ladies, people often say that they still don't belong in high-end cars because they're not a true performance platform. And while many grocery getters do use V6s and not as many grocery getters use V8s, so that's why that stigma doesn't really follow V8s around, that doesn't change the fact that the V6 still has a lot, a lot of potential. A lot of high-end luxury, sport, or exotic cars shouldn't have to feature a V8 at minimum like people think. Times are changing and emissions regulations are getting more stringent. As a result, we are starting to see more supercars than ever that use V6s. And honestly, it's not so bad. At the end of the day, it's not their fault. They're just companies filled with thousands of people versus governments made by millions of people. So obviously, we can't expect them to suddenly bend the government to their will. It's usually the other way around. They have to obey the new regulations. Regardless, it doesn't change the fact that cars can still have a V6 and be cool. The Ford GT, the Maserati MC20, the Nissan GTR, Acura NSX, Jaguar XJ220, and many, many more, despite being supercars, have still shown the true potential of a V6 and why it can still belong inside of an exotic platform or high-end sports car. Of course, whether you like the exhaust note of a V6 will always be up for debate, and I think some people think that's part of the driving experience and why some people ultimately will find it not as, I guess, high-end or exotic or special feeling because, again, you can twin-turbo a Honda Accord V6, and while it may not sound exactly the same as an exotic V6, you'll get most of the speed, and this, is, this whole entry is just me making an excuse to give someone, plant the idea within someone's head to just make a sleeper V6 Accord. Someone make one of these, make like four. 400, 600 horsepower, and then just start gapping people, bro. That's what we're actually talking about. V6s can definitely still be cool. This is a really dumb misconception because it's a super recent one, but unfortunately I've seen it uh, quite a few amount of times regarding the subject. It's recent for me, but it may have been around for other car YouTubers because I very recently talked more about the detailed part of car engines. Okay, so I saw a lot of comments saying that V14s as well as all these other engine configurations that aren't evenly divided by 720 are totally feasible in cars, and I'm completely stupid and blah. Blah, blah, blah. Maybe I took this one a bit too personally, but in my previous video regarding strange engine layouts, I had someone comment about how brainwashed I was by American school systems for believing that circles only had 360 degrees, despite me literally saying that I was oversimplifying on purpose to make it easier to understand for viewers. And also, let's be real, we're taught that not because it's brainwashing, but because it's a standardization. The person, regardless, went on to say that circles have an infinite number of degrees, therefore it is possible to balance every single engine layout in the world, and there's no such thing as an engine that can't be evenly balanced because you don't have to fear odd numbers or decimals. That's because we're limiting ourselves to 360 degrees per circle. Whereas if you made like a circle that was divisible by 14, then technically it wouldn't result in an odd number. It would result in an even number. It might not even result in decimal numbers anymore. And blah, 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 blah. Look, while mathematically and technically it is also possible to balance a V14 on computer programs where you don't have to worry about realistically machining it or making supply chains and you can just drag out as many decimal places as you want until it divides evenly. There are YouTube videos of people making theoretical perfectly balanced v14s and again other mythical layouts like v9s and so on and so forth and again it is technically possible even if you mathematically make it check out now of course is it practically possible like in real life the answer to that is no and the reason is you have to consider an entire manufacturing process as well as a supply chain. Because we have standardized production to 360 degrees for a circle, we are able to have engineers design engines based on that standard, then have machinists make a machine components to that standard, then have factory workers who are trained to assemble and quality control parts to that standard. And then we have mechanics who are taught in their trade to be able to repair, replace, and assess damages based on that standard. And finally, down to the consumer level, we as consumers can understand what we are buying based on that standard. If we just started machining components to random decimal places just to balance odd engine layouts like inline sevens, V14s, and V9s, and other silliness, then we'd never get anything done efficiently. Also think of how wasteful this would be. Many vehicles would like 
likely never get replacement components made in a timely manner, again, due to the manufacturing bottlenecks I just talked about, so people would constantly just keep throwing away their cars instead of repairing them. This is a very wannabe mathematician way of looking at the realistic concept of balancing engines and why certain engine layouts never got popular. Yes, on a sheet of paper, using pure math as mathematicians, you can balance any engine perfectly, like literally perfectly, but in the real world, it's stupid. It's one of those things where it's fun to theorize about. Like that's why there's computer simulations that can do funny decimal numbers, funny infinite amount of degrees when balancing those sillier layouts. Because obviously when you're running a simulation, go ahead and have fun. There's no supply chain that has to be created around that. You're not actually making that engine in real life. Speaking of, we obviously do have V14s in real life, but again, none of them are perfectly balanced. They all have a lot of vibration, which is why they're only used in massive vehicles like ships because in a giant ship that also floats on water the vibration doesn't really matter that much but in a small car that's also attached to land where you're more likely to feel the reverberation and vibration of you know a really poorly balanced engine it makes sense why we don't put them in cars not a single production car in history has had a v14 but it is a total misconception to call myself and several others idiots for using 360 degrees to define circles because, again, we are using that as a standard. We have to. The third engine misconception is V12s are the fastest engine ever, and this is actually said by way more people than it should be, but it's usually made by Forza kids, and you already know, they're probably in the comments already like, bro, 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 V12 swap, Miata, V12 swap, Subaru, V12 swap, Corvette, V12 swap, Audi R8, V12 swap, Land Lamborghini Aventador, V12 SWAT, but, but bro, that car already has a V12 in it. What's a V12? I don't actually know since I just clicked buttons on Forza to engine swap and now I assume that everyone in the world should be able to do that in real life just as easily as I did. Also, I'm 12. Also, when I'm 16, I'll have a Bugatti. Also, your Corvette is lame. Also, I'm probably going to lose interest in cars by a time two years pass anyways, but until then, I'll be the most annoying mother trucker ever as I pretend to act like I know more about cars just because I play a video game and can Google some specs on my iPad. The crazy part is, no matter how much I want to dunk on TikTok, the only thing stopping these degenerate V12 swapping Forzathon iPad kids from polluting the cartoony more than they already do is the fact that most of them are confined within the walls of TikTok brain rot. Part of me realizes the catastrophic effects that would cascade onwards should TikTok be banned and these brain rotted kids get let out into the rest of the world to spread their stupid infection elsewhere across the internet. Joking aside, I think it's also just because it became super overrated super fast because video games kind of over glorified its capabilities. Overall, they're still capable engines, they're still fast engines, and they're still marvels of engineering, but they most certainly are not the fastest engine configuration ever made. They're probably not even the most power efficient from a power to weight ratio. In fact, the world's fastest cars are either an eight cylinder or 16 cylinder engine these days, which is just two V8 shoved together technically. So, which brings me to the point that yes, the previous statement is absolutely just V8 propaganda because V8s are still the best, don't at me. Anyway, speaking of V8s, the fourth and final misconception about engines is that American V8s are slow for their size. I made a short about this, but I'm gonna really elaborate it because look, how many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? Whether it's classic V8s that were neutered in the 70s to meet emissions regulations or even modern V8s that are misunderstood by keyboard wars, let me break down one of the most annoying engine misconceptions ever to exist. Let's start with classics first. American V8s were never slow or poorly engineered. In fact, American V8s in the 1960s easily made 300, 350, or even 425 horsepower. The reason they got drastically slower in the 70s was due to a sudden and rapid change in EPA regulations as well as emissions laws. The reality was most American car manufacturers only produced V8s or maybe inline sixes, so when those laws rolled out within a year, didn't just have spare engines sitting in their back pocket, so they had to go back to the drawing board to come up with something that could better meet those emission guidelines. Now, because they didn't want the dealer lots to be completely empty and want customers to have nothing to buy, they still sold V8s, but they would detune them to pass the regulations. This was not a permanent solution, it was just meant to buy time until they could design more efficient engines that could actually pass these regulations naturally. Again, they didn't have anything waiting for them, right? Like, it's kind of like 
like when you rush an assignment because you didn't even know the assignment existed until you had a few hours that you were told it existed. We're not all going to do our greatest performance during that time period, but that doesn't make you stupid. You could be a very talented writer. You could be a very talented actor. But again, if you just don't have any time to prepare for something, understandably, you may not give your best performance. That doesn't make you dumb. And in this case, it doesn't make American engineers dumb. It just was way too much that was asked of them way too quickly. Thankfully, by the time the 80s rolled around, many American manufacturers did finally make fuel efficient four bangers, as well as small block V8s that were able to pass the new regulations far better than the rushed detuned big block V8s ever could. Huge emphasis on the word detuned, by the way, because again, if you actually return those engines back to their former capability, or just look at the aforementioned engines of the 60s, they were more than capable of performing well. Like, I know people like to meme six liter American engines that struggle to make 200 horsepower because Americans were drinking a bunch of stupid juice and were super uneducated and had dumb engineers, which is totally false because you have to remember the United States is the first country to land on the moon. Actually, wait, we're still the only country to land on the moon. Take that, fanboys. <laughs> Regarding modern V8s, many critics claim that they are underpowered for their size, often in reference to their displacement. They call American V8s old, massive, underpowered, and outdated, and this comes from a misunderstanding of how Americans make V8s compared to other countries. Now, I already made a video that briefly talked about displacement laws and how I think they're stupid, but I'm going to say it again here. Displacement isn't the sole factor that determines engine size, pollution, or efficiency. Unfortunately, many brain-dead politicians think displacement is big, bad, scary number and have pushed several laws throughout Europe, Asia, and many other places around the world that unfortunately teach citizens the misconception that big bad displacement is also super scary, evil, and plutive and inefficient. When in fact, as I mentioned, larger displacement engines can actually be smaller and less pollutive. Engines are very complicated pieces of machinery. There are many variables that determine their efficiency and physical size, aside from just being lazy and making a law based on one big evil scary number. This one is kind of like a little parlor trick I like to pull out of my back pocket because I really love using it. The 6.2 liter engine in the Corvette is constantly being ridiculed for being too power inefficient relative to its liters per cylinder, while they completely ignore the fact that it gets 35 highway miles per gallon. But more importantly, it actually weighs less than most engines with lower displacement. The Corvette engine is not big. I repeat, it's not big. It's called a small block for a reason. The entire engine actually sits behind the front axle, making the car technically a front mid layout. Ask any YouTuber who swapped both a 5 liter V8 Coyote and a 6.2 liter V8 LS3 engine into cars and they'll tell you which one was the actual physically larger one. Per pound or kilogram, the 6.2 liter V8 found in Corvettes is actually very efficient. Not gonna lie, that's what matters more, power to weight ratio, not liter to horsepower ratio. Don't get me wrong, it's possible to make a horrendously anemic and inefficient engine if you have like a 10 liter engine that only makes 100 horsepower. That's a terrible, you know, horsepower to liter ratio, but the point is, I think people massively emphasize the importance of that because they just drastically misunderstand what actually makes engines huge. Again, there are several factors that determine it, not just one number. Can displacement and higher cylinder count create a trend where usually bigger equals larger engine? Eh, kind of, but again, I can tell you about the 1.5 liter H16 and that will again kind of put us at square one again because people will hear 16 cylinder think it's super massive only to realize it's 1.5 liter instead of like, I don't know, 10 liters or wherever that they expect a 16 cylinder to be, which further proves the point that numbers without context are very difficult to write laws and make judgments judgments based on. Seeing the physical item in real life, however, or even again, seeing the actual weight of the item is probably a more realistic comparison of how big the engine is. Never just look at one number and assume it speaks for the entirety of the engine's capability, whether it's cylinder count like V6, V12, or even H16. Don't look at displacement as well. A V6 can be faster than you think, a V12 can be slower than you think, and a 6.2 liter V8 may be smaller than you think. Anyways, I hope you had fun or learned something new from this video. If you love automotive content, then make sure to like and subscribe. Subscribe. Thanks for watching and share this video to your brain rotted TikTok friend who streams Forza to zero viewers on Discord. Was that oddly specific? Probably. I'll see y'all next time. Blade Angel out.